Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I gave, give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. When Rick and I agreed to help with the service today, I had lots of ideas what to do with the sermon. For starters, I wasn't crazy about being compared to sheep in the 23rd Psalm. Who likes to hear that they are easily led, need constant oversight, and are, let's face it, stupid? <laughs> Look at that amazingly talented and intelligent sheep over there, said no one ever. Okay, this can be fixed. I'll just rewrite the psalm and make it more relevant to our lives today. We'll get rid of the shepherd sheep analogy first, then maybe change green pastures and still waters to something more contemporary. Oh, and the rod and staff bit, that had to go too. And who wants oil poured on their head? Change that while we're at it. There is so much in this psalm that only applies to life 2,000 years ago. Except, except I found there is no way to improve on the psalm. Yes, its wording may be antiquated, and some of the phrases don't apply to life today. But at its heart, it's one of the most powerful and reassuring pieces ever written. Despite the quaint wording, it absolutely applies to the here and now. The message starts out by reminding us of the importance of rest and peace and making time for being still and quiet. Green pastures may not be where we lie down, but we all have experienced the rejuvenating powers of a nap or a good night's sleep. Still waters always makes me think of a deep, dark pond in the middle of a forest. Just imagining being there is calming. Even in Jesus' time, people had to be forced to slow down, take a break. The psalm doesn't say that God suggested me to lie down in green pastures. It says he maketh me do this. Then he shows the way to those still waters where private thought, prayer, and meditation can happen in peace. These do restore one's soul, which is something we all desperately need every now and then. Who among us has not had those moments of being completely overwhelmed, disappointed, betrayed, or in despair? Having one's soul restored at that moment is one of God's greatest gifts. Being led in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake is the most challenging of the phrases in this psalm, I think. Sometimes we do have to be led. Being on the path of righteousness is not always the most comfortable place to be. There are occasions we would just as soon skip that or cheat a little. There's a saying about having a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. When that happens and we think of Jesus' teachings, we know in our hearts that we have to follow the angel, also known as the path of righteousness, even if it's inconvenient or will make some people upset with us. And here comes one of my favorite parts. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Time and time again, I have been able to tackle righting a wrong or step way out of my comfort zone because of this reassurance. We are never alone. We are never left to fend for ourselves. This phrase reminds me a lot of Romans 8, 38, 39, another one of my favorite verses. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Psalm 23 sums all this up in one phrase and lets us know we have nothing to fear, ever, for God is always, always with us. And now God gives us the ultimate satisfaction. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Imagine a time in your life when you have been unfairly passed over, or wronged, or accused, or disrespected by others. Or maybe there are some people who just don't like you for unknown reasons. Now imagine your own personal champion, who not only comes to your defense, but then shows you great favor over those enemies. You are given privileges, awards, and recognition in front of them. How does that feel? First, you feel protected because you have a champion. And second, you feel great. Your cup indeed runneth over. The last sentence reflects the joy of knowing all these things. That God wants and needs us to slow down, rest, reflect. We shouldn't be productive every minute of every day. That our souls are being cared for and restored. That we will be led in our hearts to follow the paths of righteousness, even when it's not easy. That God is with us always in every part of our lives. We don't have to fear anything because he is there. That God will not only watch over, lead, and protect us, but will also give us the very human satisfaction of safety and bounty for all to see. That we are forever in his love our whole lives. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Maybe being one of God's sheep isn't so bad after all. Let us pray. Lord, we hear your words to us and give thanks for your loving guidance and comfort. Help us to live as your faithful sheep as we go about our daily lives. Amen.